Right. Hi, everyone. I just thought I'd come on here. Everyone's asking for where I've started, how I've begun. Made some notes. Um, so I'm John, or JR, or Jono, whatever you want to call me. Most call me JR now, because of JR scaffolding. <laughs> um, just going to go through from school to traveling Australia, when I brought my first pickup, my jobs, what I'm doing, where I'm going in the future, the struggles, cash flow problems, just everything. And then I'll try and put a timeline at the bottom so you can skip through to what you want to see. Um, so from school, age 16, I went straight from school to college doing carpentry. Um, I enjoyed it, but I wasn't earning any money. And because of my mum's problems, she couldn't afford to pay from a college and my bus. So I was having to pay for it myself. So I sort of got pushed a bit to go work for, well, he was my uncle-in-law, you could say. Um, so I went to work for him as an apprentice scaffolder. Uh, I did that for probably two, two and a half years. Um, got through my part one, but as soon as it comes to doing all the paperwork and all the other stuff, he wouldn't do it. So I got my part one out of that and that's it. Um, so I left him. I traveled to Australia for the first time. Traveled all of Australia, the East Coast. If you want to see more about that, I could do a video and put some videos on of what we did and where we went. Uh, we traveled all the way down the East Coast, uh, all the way down the bottom to Melbourne, and then all the way up through the middle. Got a job up in Darwin for probably six months. And then we traveled down to the bottom, finished in Perth. My miss had a good job there. Then flew home from Perth back home to England. Uh, when we got back to England, I found another scaffold job for another local company to here. Worked there for probably six months. Uh, still didn't get my courses, still nothing. Had enough of it. Went back to Australia, traveled around a bit and then landed a good job on um, working for Caledonia Scaffolding in Sydney. Uh, they was doing the, the new M5 tunnel through the middle of, or well, a summit tunnel through the middle of Sydney. I was working on there, like probably earning about £1,200 a week. And then I ended up going on night shift there and went from 1000 to about £2,500 a week. And all that money I was sending home to England because we always wanted to set the business up. So I sent all that home, saved, working seven days a week, nights. My partner was doing the same, always working much as we could so as when we got home we could start building this after we traveled australia <clears throat> i got back to england worked for another company did my part two scaffold course finished it done did my lorry license work whilst working for another company uh so that was all all done first thing i did when i was setting up the company was brought a pickup the first pickup was 2700 pound Brought that, using it for various other jobs, doing patios, concrete slabs, just <clears throat> anything I could do. For the yard, I worked for the local farmer here for free, which is the missus' his granddad. Worked for him for free, doing concrete slabs, re-roofs, just anything he needed doing, I was doing it. Getting the yard, the yard was all free for, for the first year or so. Um, I did a re-roof for my, for my nan. I did all that just in return for the scaffold. I'll put some photos of the, of the roof we did. It was a big roof, big job. So I did all that. Did a few little roofs in between whilst I was waiting for the jobs to come in. Then I set the page up, started advertising that I could do the scaffolding once I had all that kit back. Got a few very small jobs, didn't feel like much, but at the time, 600 quid jobs, 700 quid jobs, 200 quid job. I felt, felt like it was great. It was just me and me and one other person. Then at that point, it was getting bigger. More jobs were coming in. I got in with a, a bigger contractor doing like bigger jobs, re-roofs, restoration, building work, like rebuilding walls. Uh, 
Then I brought another pickup because obviously the workload was just getting stupid. I financed that one, 19 grand plus that. I financed that. So after I brought that pickup, we was getting more and more work. Everything was getting bigger. It was growing like a lot quicker than what I could have thought. From the little jobs we was doing at the start, it grew like tenfold. I couldn't believe the amount of work we was getting in. But I was always doing the jobs. If I priced it and I messed it up, I'd always still do them for the price I said. I'd put extra in the jobs, like never cut corners when you're scaffolding. Make sure everything's done to the book, bang on. Everything's safe. Never leave a job where you think it's going to be unsafe or blow over or whatever is going to go on. Make sure you put your ties in. Do everything properly. After that, we was just getting bigger jobs. Then I landed the biggest job we did, which was 80 grand, I think I got for that, which was a massive temporary roof. I'll put some photos on of that. Big National Trust farmhouse job. It it was bigger than what I should have been doing at the time. I had to get on that job. I had to get most of the money paid up front to buy kit. So I used all that money up front on the job to buy the kit. I had to struggle then paying the lads. Like financially, it was probably the wrong decision, but it's put me to where I am. So I grew, I probably brought about 40, 50 grand worth of kit at that point. And it grew the company big, quick. From there, we finished that job, done. I had to catch up then, try and get some money back in the bank so I could pay the lads, keep on top of it. We was doing like seven, I was up there at seven days a week, nights, dropping kit off at like 10 o'clock at night because the pickups were breaking down, everything was going wrong. It felt like, it felt like the worst thing possible. We had another team running around doing the other jobs while me and Steve was doing the, the temp roof, just basing it out, building it slowly like, Two blokes to build that was a mission, trust me. <laughs> Two blokes putting a big temporary roof on, trying to put the beams up and, oh, it was murder. But we got it done. From there then, over the last, well, it'd be, this would be coming into 2023 now. March 2023, I brought the lorry because it was too much work and I couldn't keep up with it. So I brought that 20 grand outright in return for like, doing scaffolds and managed to save up. 20 grand, brought that lorry outright. More work come in then, bigger jobs. I I just couldn't keep up with it. Re-roofs, building work, more contractors, more everything. Like we was just growing way quicker than what I could have thought. All these jobs come in. We was just about keeping up with them, just trying to get by. I, I struggled to turn down jobs because I feel like if you turn them down then they don't come back like Try and I try and manage so we can do them all weekends, afternoons, nights. Starting to think now I shouldn't do that, ch like chase the work. I should put the prices up and just do the minimum amount. But you learn from these things. The most recent job I did, which was Tetten Hall, I underpriced that by about 30 grand. So I lost a lot of money on that. But even though I underpriced it and I was losing money on it, I still do the job and do it to the best of my ability. Because if you don't do jobs to the best of your ability, people, you get a bad name, bad reputation. It's just not worth it. Make sure you do it all properly. I have struggled now for the last six months because of that job, trying to get the money back to pay the lads, keep the lorries running, fix pickups, stuff like that. We're not great at the minute. Twenty. I think I owe about out about 20 grand. So I'm owed probably 25, 30, so it's not bad, but it's scary. You, you don't want to not pay the lads. You've got to make sure you keep on top of money problems. Um, cash flow, just getting the money into the bank is hard work, trust me. It's all right when they paid you can, you're all right then but just getting the money is hard work especially with 30 day payments it's just it's just stupid like trying to keep on top of money problems is hard um from now this is up to today so i'm 25 built it from the age of 20 i think i've been going since 2020 so that's 4 years so i was 21 when i started it's 
it was a lot to I didn't realize what I was doing at the start but I'm glad I did it it it's not easy anyone who thinks that running a business is easy it is not easy trust me try it if you can do it great it's hard work harder than what it looks um so in the future I want to be doing bigger jobs I want to be able to do churches, spires, building sites, full houses, like just grow more and more, maybe get another lorry, depends, more lads. I've only got three lads on for me now, full time. I did have three apprentices on full time, um, but two of them left. So don't take on apprentices when you first start a business, always get your business set up. I would suggest taking on a qualified scaffolder to start with from the very start. So as they know what they're doing, you don't have to explain to them then you can, if you had a day off or use away, they can just go and do the job. You haven't got to worry about it. Um, in the future, like I say, I want to be doing bigger jobs, churches, spires, full 20 hours housing sites, just grow, keep growing, keep building. I'll do more of this YouTube stuff, see how it goes. I'd like to be able to do more of these challenges, these YouTube challenges, build obstacle courses, swings. I want to build a big tower and put a pool at the bottom, jump into it, just stupid stuff, have fun. I want to enjoy what I'm doing, make sure I enjoy it, make sure it doesn't get on top of me. It's been a bad couple of years, we've had a lot of crap happen. It's just, it got on top of me a bit. I'm starting to come back now, I'm trying to bring myself back. Because obviously when, when stuff goes wrong and then you've got to run a business as well, it's, it's all right when you've just got to run the business, but if you've got to run the business and sort all these other things out, it, it makes it really hard to, to keep your head in one thing when you've got your head in so many different things. It's, it's stupid sometimes. And so yeah, future, buy more scaffold, grow. I want to settle down this year, not buy much, get some money behind me, save up. An emergency fund, like I need some money saved. So as if stuff goes wrong, like what's gone wrong in the few last few weeks, like I've had to pay three grand for the lorry to be fixed. Then I've got to pay for it MOT next week. I've got to pay two of the cars are due MOT, the pickups due MOT, and I've got I've not really saved to keep money in the bank for that. So I need to make sure I'm doing that in the future. Then from there, we'll see where we end up in the next couple of years. Hopefully it grows. Hopefully we keep going the way we are. Take on some more scaffolders. Keep building. I need to go and do my advanced scaffold tickets. I need to send the lad on his advanced. The other lad's just finishing his apprenticeship. So he'll be qualified. Then he can go and do his advanced. Maybe look at taking on another apprentice in the future. But I have been put off doing that. But we'll see. We'll see where we go. So... There you are. That's how I started from school. If you want me to go into detail on any of this stuff, put it in the comments. If you enjoy this sort of stuff, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll make more of it. Comment what sort of stuff do you want me to do? What do you want, what do you want to see? I'll build, I'd like to build in the yard maybe a dropper scaffold, teach people how to do it, build a beams over roofs, stuff like that, show people how to do it. I might build more stuff around the yard, like splays, how I do a splay and then how college do a splay. Gantries, fans, how to build a fan. Let me know what you want to see and I'll try and build it and get some stuff on it. The one lad who's doing courses said he's going to bring back some drawings of what they expect you at college and then I'm going to build them in the yard. I think that would be interesting. We'll see. See what happens.